Hello, my name is Jeff Bach with the City of Charlotte Erosion Control Program. Today we'll be talking about the rules and regulations, different agencies, the NCG 010,000 construction site permit, and violations. The regulatory agencies on the federal level are the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, or the U.S. EPA. They are located in Atlanta, Georgia. We also have the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which has a location in Charlotte, North Carolina. On the state level, we have the NC Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Demler, or the Division of Energy and Mineral and Land Resources, are the inspectors that you'll most likely find visiting construction site projects. There's also the Division of Water Resources. Mecklenburg County has a memorandum of agreement with the Division of Water Resources, and they are able to inspect with their authority. Locally, we have the City of Charlotte Erosion Control Program and the Mecklenburg County Erosion Control Program. The US EPA inspects in the general permit and enforce under the general permit. They can issue civil penalties of $25,000 per day. The US Army Corps of Engineers regulates the dredge and fill of jurisdictional wetlands and streams under the authority of the 404 permit. They issue cease and desist orders in order to comply with the permit. NCDEQ, Energy, Mineral, and Land Resources. They inspect under the Sedimentation Pollution Control Act of 1973. The five mandatory standards are you must have an erosion and sediment control plan, the approved plan must be followed, buffer zones must be provided, and the stabilization of cut and fill slopes is required. They regulate the NCG 010,000 construction site stormwater permit. They can also issue civil penalties up to $5,000 per day. NCDEQ, the Division of Water Resources, issues 401 certifications for impact to jurisdictional streams and wetlands. They also inspect to ensure compliance with the permit and can issue civil penalties up to $25,000 per day per violation. The NCG 010,000 construction site stormwater permit is a blanket permit for all sites that are equal to or greater than one acre. On April 1st, 2019, it was updated. It governs all sites equal to or greater than one acre. You are subject to the permit in addition to the approved erosion and sediment control plan. The authority is delegated to the states from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency under the requirements of the Clean Water Act. The requirements of the NCG 010,000 are concrete handling, manage to avoid surface waters, stabilization timeframes, seven days for perimeters and slopes, 14 days on all other areas. Skimmers are required on all basins with one acre or greater drainage areas. Self-inspection and reporting is also required once per seven calendar days and within 24 hours of a rain event greater, to, greater than or equal to one inch. These records need to be retained for three years upon completion. The erosion and sediment control plan must be approved. You'll receive a grading letter of approval. Your approved plan must be followed if it cannot be followed and needs to be changed, you can meet with your erosion control inspector and discuss possible changes. Equipment, operations, and maintenance, such as fuels, lubricants, coolants, and petroleum products, need to be collected in order to stay in compliance with the NCG 010,000. Material handling, like herbicides, insecticides, and fertilizers need to be handled in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications. Building material and waste handling, demolition, construction, litter, and sanitary waste must be kept clean. Since April, the fine print of the NCGO 10,000 is you'll be issued a grading letter of approval. You will then fill out a notice of intent through the state of North Carolina, 
you'll receive a certificate of coverage, and you must include detail sheets on your plan. This is the detail sheet for ground stabilization and material handling. This is the detail sheet for self-inspection, record keeping, and reporting. The notice of intent is rather easy to fill out, but you do need to find the surface water classification at the web address found above. You'll then click on surface water classifications. You can search by street name or location to find the surface water classification. As you can see, Briar Creek is a classification of C, which will be put on your notice of intent. Locally, Charlotte Mecklenburg Soil Erosion and Sediment Control Ordinances are the City of Charlotte's Code of Ordinances, which is Chapter 17. Mecklenburg County has an independent ordinance. A land disturbing activity is defined as any use of the land by any person in residential, governmental, industrial, education, institutional, or commercial development, highway and road construction, and maintenance that results in a change in the ground cover or topography that may cause or contribute to sedimentation. Land disturbing activities can also be exempt of the ordinance, such as agricultural activities, legitimate timber harvesting activities conducted in accordance with BMPs set out in the NC Forest Practice Guidelines, mining activities, emergency operations, and land disturbing activities regulated exclusively by the state, such as the Panthers Stadium, schools, anything that involves public funding. The general requirements of the ordinance is you must have plan approval for all sites greater than two or equal one acre. The approved plan must be followed. You must follow the sequence of the plan and the installation of measures. Self-inspection and reporting is also required by the ordinance and you must be a competent individual by attending and passing the Charlotte Mecklenburg Certified Site Inspector Training Class. Civil penalties up to $5,000 per day per violation can be administered. Grading permits, as I said, are required for any land disturbance equal to or greater than one acre. Lands developed as a unit will be aggregated regardless of ownership. So if several properties on the same street are being developed greater than one acre, we consider it regardless of ownership and a grading without a permit may be sent out. That also goes for borrow and waste areas. If waste material is leaving your site and going to an unpermitted site, you can also be cited. Exceptions of this are activities approved at the pre-construction conference, which are basically the installation of measures and any other activities that need to take place in order to achieve the grading permit. Activities for the purpose of fighting fires, the plans must include an authorized statement of financial responsibility. If at any time during the course of the project, the financial responsibility changes, a new statement of financial responsibility needs to be sent to either City of Charlotte or Mecklenburg County. The plan must comply with all federal, state, and local laws, rules, and regulations. You must include a site-specific construction sequence. Above all, the plan must be followed or revised. Getting started, you'll be notified of plan approval by the grading letter of approval. You'll then apply and receive a certificate of coverage through the NOI process. It's recommended to have the site flagged, such as the limits, basin outfalls, and buffers. You'll then contact your erosion control coordinator to schedule the pre-construction meeting. You'll discuss project scope and installation of tree protection and erosion control BMPs. You'll install measures clearing only as necessary for installation or as agreed upon at the pre-construction meeting. You'll then contact your erosion control coordinator for inspection of measures and urban forestry for tree protection. After inspector verifies installation as specified in the approved plan, a grading permit will be issued and the site development activities may commence, such as clearing and grubbing and grading. 
Field changes and disclosures of failures. Field change process. You can always contact your inspector for approval of any field changes. However, you may be directed to revise the plan if the changes are significant. Failures or deficiencies resulting in off-site sediment must be disclosed to the inspector and documented on your weekly inspection sheets. As far as emergency operations or emergency situations are concerned, if there's an emergency on your site, by all means take any measures necessary in order to correct the emergency and then contact your erosion control coordinator. Monitoring and maintenance. You're required to do weekly inspections and there's a new NC Diener inspection requirement form. Qualifying rainfall event inspections, documentation of failures and deficiencies, and corrections of failures and deficiencies. Above all, the plan must function to effectively prevent off-site impacts. If field changes are deemed insufficient or ineffective, a plan revision may be required. Any project directly upstream of a privately owned water feature, pond, lake, impoundment, may be required to survey sediment levels pre- and post-construction. Additional requirements in certain areas, 303 delisted streams, critical areas, McDowell Creek Watershed, Goose Creek Watershed, are also required. There's a five-day limit on time of exposure. Four bays are required in the basins. Spillways must be designed to pass the 25-year storm event, and there's a 20-acre limit on concurrent disturbance. As you can see, the enhanced erosion control requirement areas are shown in pink, green, blue, and yellow, as well as the 303 delisted streams. Violations and notices. We have a notice of violation, a notice of continuing violation, a notice of violation with penalties, a notice of compliance, and a notice of compliance with penalties. A notice of violation may be issued if it's a first time violation, deficiencies were identified not resulting in significant offsite sedimentation, verbal requests for corrections have proven ineffective. A continuing notice of violation may be issued if corrective actions required by the notice of violation or inspection report were not completed by the specified date. The continuing notice of violation goes straight to civil, pen civil penalties and may be backdated to the original date the notice of violation was written. A notice of violation with penalties may be issued if numerous off-site sediment areas were observed off-site sedimentation beyond limits or into a wetland, lake, or water course, the violator has a history of non-compliance, the violator is grading without a permit, the violator is grading beyond the limits of the approved plan. Violations are subject to civil penalties up to $5,000 per day per violation. Aggravating and mitigating circumstances will be considered when assessing penalty amounts. As far as appeals are concerned, it's always good to contact your erosion control coordinator and set up a meeting to discuss any aggravating and mitigating circumstances. You may be also directed to the Charlotte Mecklenburg Certified Site Inspector Training for a potential reduction in the civil penalty. Following that, you can apply for a Stormwater Advisory Committee appeal. That's a $100 filing fee, and there's a 30-day period to file appeal. On the notice of compliance with penalties, there's also a request for remission through the Sediment Control Commission. Thank you for your time.